Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're going to be resoling a pair of Allen Edmund Dandy 2.0s. Soles are still fine, but we're going to be putting on a red day night. Come check it out. I'm Alan Trushkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods, as well as recommendations from our industry. So I'm a little excited because we're doing the red day night sole. It's not a very common one. Most everybody does the black or the brown as an option. Um, some, some places don't even have the red in stock too. But it's a little bit of excitement for me just because it's not very common. I mean, we've, we've done a handful of them with the, with the red, but uh, not, to, not to the extent that I was able to do any videos because I started doing the videos beforehand. But as you can tell, I mean, this sole has a decent amount of wear left in it, but hey, sometimes some people want to change out the sole, upgrade it, or whatever. I have a few pairs of Allen Edmonds here that are getting the same, well, not the same thing done, but they're, they're getting upgrades. I mean, the soles still have plenty of wear, they have plenty of life, but, you know, if, uh, if you're wanting different use or function for your, uh, your shoes or boots that's the way you go so I just took off the top lift heel and take a little bit of thinner put it on the inside here around the heel base all around so it helps deactivate some of those glues makes it easier to pry off that heel and not break it off in chunks just because again we try to save the original heel bases as much as possible even if we have to adjust them and uh, replacing the heel base completely you know, it does cost extra if you want a solid, well, a stacked leather heel base. But um, I've noticed that these Allen Edmund heel bases, they actually don't match up. So you can get the same exact boot here and the same size width, everything's the same. But the heel bases are slightly different. So basically this boot is shaped and formed already to that particular heel base. So if at all possible, we try to keep them intact. Making a new one would do it out of stacked leather and it'll be an upgrade definitely, but it may not feel right until it has that kind of slight break in period. Even even if we adjust it a fair amount and everything, it, it has a little bit more of a break in period at that point. Got my handy dandy heel pry right here. Just a curved tool like that, almost like a screwdriver, just a little bit sharper on the end. Allows me to get in underneath this heel base and start slowly prying it up. Go around all the edges first. This allows me to kind of get a feel for if this one's gonna or this heel base is gonna fight me on coming off or not. Seems like this one should be coming off just fine. Sometimes we get those heel bases that they really fight us, so we have to undo all the edges everywhere and then add a little more thinner to deactivate more glue further inside where the heel base is. So, but this one seems seems to be all right. I mean, my luck, I jinxed myself or something. No, nope, we're good. you guys see it a little bit better I'm not used to this camera angle but I've had some some people suggesting that maybe I should change the angle of the camera show my face a little bit that wasn't the goal of the videos the goal was to show you the work but hey maybe I'll switch back and forth between the, the angles let me know what you think in the comments section below do you like this angle do you like the one before where you don't see my face. Nah, I'm not gonna get upset if you don't want to look at my face. Right. Let's see. Where'd my marker go? There we go. Right. I'll make sure to mark this one is for the left foot. Oh man. Right. 
I'm gonna let that glue dry for just a little bit because there's glue still left over here and I can't really can't really write on it until that thinner the deactivated the adhesives dries just a bit but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the shoe I should probably take out the laces some boots and shoes the laces are perfectly fine staying in this one however because it only has a couple of eyelets three on each uh, on each side right there I'm gonna take out the laces just because they're gonna stick out way too much and I don't want them getting caught up in the machines or something. I mean, if they get damaged, I'll replace them, of course, and, and no problems, but these laces are completely intact and they're a little bit different than ours. So, you know, sometimes some, some gentlemen and ladies, they order a specific type of lace that they really like and everything, and, and it's possibly no longer available. It's irreplaceable, in other words. We just don't want to damage those, so I'll get them out of the way. Okay. All right. Now I can go ahead and put the thinner just where the welt is around, so it deactivates the adhesive, so that we can cut off the sole a little bit better. Yes, there's some dripping on the floor, that's normal. My three-year-old always, uh, Vlad, some of you may have seen him. Oh, he's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Starts freaking out because it's dripping on the floor. At home, we teach him don't drip or drop on the floor. Well, here at work, dad's dripping stuff all over the floor. So it freaks him out a little bit. <laughs> But uh, I'll go ahead and take off this heel base real quick. I gotta set them aside to dry or even wipe them off actually here in a minute so I can mark them up and make sure to mark left. Uh, the ticket number and I just put AE under there so I know they go to a pair of Allen Edmonds. I mean, I could tell by the way these are designed, um, but there are a few brands out there that are very similar to what Allen Edmonds are like. But I've got a handful of pairs here, so I'm just gonna put AE on it regardless. So. Go ahead and get that taken care of, and when it's time to cut off the sole, I'll meet you back over here then. All right, so I've got both heel bases off. They're just sitting there right now. I got my uh, little rip knife. This is what they're usually called, their rip knives. Um, and uh, it's, it's very similar to what you would have with the regular razor blade. It's just got more of an angle on it, and uh, it's a little bit narrower, at least uh, narrower this way but the thickness of the metal itself is actually a little bit thicker than what these razor blade ones usually come in as. And I personally prefer this one. Some cobblers like to use these ones. Some cobblers actually sand everything out and pull it off and then finally pull the stitches. I don't like doing that personally. It drives me nuts. It's extra, extra time and everything. My father does that actually at his shop and it just, I can't stand it personally. But then again, my father does that because he has cut himself with this thing so many times. I think he has a slight fear of it a little bit now at this point um, in his life. But yeah, I still remember as a kid, you know, he's slit his finger right here. As you can tell, I got a bit of a gash right there that's healing up. It's looking nice. But um, in our industry, you're going to get hurt. You know? That's why if you have a local cobbler you go to, if you're not working with us, if we're not doing repair work for you, but you enjoy watching the videos, I'd like to say on behalf of all the other cobblers out there, show a little appreciation to them. Give them a nice review on their website or something or on a social media platform, wherever it may be. That helps out small cobbler shops always, um, even the big ones too. And uh, maybe holidays or something. Stop by, maybe a box of cookies or, or a drink or something. Cobblers definitely appreciate it. I'm not saying for me, you don't have to do it for me. I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of all the other cobblers out there that, uh, especially the ones that are not very active online. There are a lot of great cobblers out there in the world that do awesome work, but they're not active online, social media or anything like that. So they, they're not very well known. Give them a little bit of a appreciation. Maybe 
maybe post on your so social media platform be like hey check out this cobbler He's, I can't seem to find him on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or wherever it may be even MySpace maybe an old school cobbler once tried getting onto MySpace and gave up on it you never know is MySpace even around I have no idea but uh, I've got the sole off here now technically I don't really need to replace this cork as you can tell I mean we didn't really lose much of the cork. There's a little small chunk that got stuck to the sole from right there where the shank is. But uh, there's little gaps here missing and everything. And that's one of the dilemmas with what they use. It's called hot cork method. They basically take melted cork, or at least semi-melted cork, and uh, fill it in here. And then they take a hot iron and press it in. Sometimes they don't put enough. Sometimes they put way too much and press it down. And it's just, it's a mess. But, considering that these aren't very worn, I don't really have to replace this cork um, just because the gentleman hasn't, doesn't even seem like he may have possibly even broken, broken these in completely. I mean, feel on the inside here of the other shoes since I have the sole on. Yeah, he just, just barely started breaking these in. There's no serious imprints anywhere. There's no density changes in the cork. I could leave it in. I'm not gonna. That's just the way I am. I, I can't. I can't. I see that cork. I see that little gap there. It's, it's going to drive me nuts. I put the sole back on, our new sole. It's going to drive me nuts. Well, and because it's such a fresh, fine layer of cork, in other words, all the uh, adhesives that come in the cork mixture are basically intact. So there's a pretty good chance I'm actually going to have to sand the majority of this cork out. Because... It's more problematic trying to pry it all out so I will set this guy aside and go ahead and sand out as much of the cork as I can pull out the uh, old stitches around the edges here where the welt is you can see a little edge that's coming up already with the stitch just comes out on our stitch puller around there so I'll get that taken care of I'll get a midsole sanded up and uh, meet you back over here in a little bit before I go actually to get these out of the way so I don't have them lying around. I'm going to take out the nails out of these heel bases here. Usually there are seven gripper nails. Maybe you might be able to see them. There are little rings around there. And uh, we're going to go ahead and take them out. Some cobblers clip them. Some cobblers, you know, actually reuse them. I've, I've seen a few where they just put on the heel base and they just hammer it all around and reuse the nails. It's a little weird for me. Plus, I don't like these uh, nails that they've been using there recently. It seems like there's more soft metals in there. Although ours have been replaced with uh, with new nails as well that have softer metals in there. But it it's a shame. Just because the company closed down some time ago. And the new companies that came in, they found ways to cut corners. And none of us cobblers can find an alternative that's... Uh, that's up to our specs and you know it's just just a shame when that happens there we go. but that's one one good use for the back end of this uh, French hammer if anyone's wondering because just hammering down you might accidentally hit the head of the nail again so I like to flip the hammer around tap it all around in between where the nails are and let them rise up just grab our pliers here, pull them out, good to go. Okay, for some of you cobblers also out there, and anyone that's also an avid shoe enthusiast, you love knowing about the construction of shoes. A few quick details about Allen Edmund heel bases. As you can tell, one side is thinner than the other. The thicker side usually goes on the inside of the shoe. It goes on the inside right here. It's actually a support feature for the way these are designed and everything. It's designed to level out everything and um, helps with your walking pattern and your posture as well as the support for the foot itself. The other thing is there's a little black pad here. That's that thin layer. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off because we have to anyway since we're putting day night on. a portion of it 
But you can see that layer right there, and then underneath is that fiber board here. That's the heel base, and then this little rubber pad is applied on there using um, the nails, of course, that hold everything down. That little rubber piece is added in as like a buffer just because this fiber board doesn't adhere very well to certain materials, and the rubber piece, it tends to adhere a lot better uh, a variety of different ones um, plus because you've got the nails going through that rubber piece here it's a uh, good reinforcement on it but it also acts as a miniature shock absorber in a way just because the fiber board is very very dense I mean if I try to bend it right now it's not really gonna bend it's actually just gonna snap and crumble on us where a leather one Although it's still hard and rigid, it's got a little bit of give to it. Even on pressure and impact, it still has a little bit more give than the fiberboard does. But we're going to be putting on day-night heels, so we have to remove this section anyways, just because the day-night heels are much thicker, and you'll see that later on. I'll actually leave this piece on for now because it's going to be my indicator for left foot. Ticket number 3574. 3574 AE. Yeah, I don't think, at least not today. Yeah, it doesn't look like I have any uh, other Allen Edmonds today that I'm working on. Um, so I could put AE on there and know that they don't go with the John Bobs or, or those. Uh, R.M. Williams. I'll actually be doing a video on those ones too makes it a little bit easier sometimes because for us cobblers also we do multiple repairs all at once when i'm doing videos like this and a few other cobblers that do videos out there we actually slow down our workflow our production to make these videos so I really hope you everyone's appreciating that you're subscribed you're liking the videos and everything it does take a bit of effort and time and it takes time out of our workflow so we get a little behind every now and then but we still want to make these great videos for you and hopefully educate some people who didn't know what a quality pair of shoes or boots are actually supposed to be like. Um, but also to cut it back on time, I set aside a couple pairs of shoes that I really like and really want to do a video on. And I try to run those few pairs all at once doing the videos so I'm not having to set up camera and back and forth and move the camera around. So. If anybody's noticed sometimes I'll be wearing the same shirt in multiple videos or something and it all just seems like it lines up it sometimes happens that way because I'm making about two or three videos all in one sitting sometimes I just only like one pair of shoes for that week and I only I only record one video but busy time of the year for us so all right but I'll go ahead and take care of all this here off camera um, I'll uh, I'll meet you back over here once I am about to be putting the shank and the cork and everything back in just so you can check out what the shank is like to see if it's intact or not. Um, you know, even though it's a newer pair of shoes, you never know. It may have uh, gotten damaged at some point somehow, but I'll meet you back here in just a little bit. All right. All right. So I've got all the cork sanded out as best I can. Of course, there's going to be a little bit left behind here and there because you know, if I sand way too much at it, unfortunately, some of this rib may get damaged and some of the other sections. You don't want to sand too much. If there's a little bit behind left of the cork, it's fine because the new cork that we're going to be putting in, it's going to kind of mold and shape to it all. And uh, any parts that have layers of cork still left behind, it's going to be kind of raised up and then we're going to go through a sand it flush as well. So that won't be an issue. But at this point, I just wanted to let everyone see um, we've got our stitch puller here on our shine machine on the very edge. Shine machines just tend to spin a little bit slower than our sanders do, so we don't have an attachment on the sander. We prefer to have it on the shine machine just due to the speed. But before I do that, I like to double check to see what color stitch we have in here, just to be sure. It looks like we got brown. And so I take the back end of the heel here, I'm going to put BRWN for brown. This area is going to get sanded out anyways for the uh, top lift heel, but uh, since I do a fair amount of boots and shoes, I can't remember every single one of them on which uh, color thread they used on top. I could change it out to black or brown. Usually I'll be using a brown anyways on it, but I've had some pairs of like Dalton Allen Edmonds and other shoes come through where, you know, the shoe's all brown, the welt is brown and everything, the edge is brown, but the stitching is black, you know, so... I might as well write it down. If you request a specific color, we can put a different color in. You want orange? Sure, we could put orange in there. Do you want red to match your red day nights? Yeah, we could do that. 
but the bottom stitch is going to be a different color so i'm not going to bother marking for that um that's not really too visible but i just wanted to show that real quick i'm going to go ahead and uh grab the mate real quick so it's closer by and go ahead and get started on getting started. Got all of them pulled. There's a few spots here and there where they may have not come out, like right there. I'll go through and take that out by hand. I don't want to press too hard to forcefully try to get them out, especially in areas like this on the inside right here. You can see that little split right there. That's actually where the welt connects to each other. And um, if you press too hard on here, it could end up damaging it. So we're going to avoid that if possible if we go through it just ever so slightly and it does manage to pull stitches great if it doesn't we're not going to forcefully try to get the stitches out we'd rather take them all out by hand the rest of the way and taking them out is just uh, getting in there with a little small point the tool plucking them out uh, grabbing some pliers if we need to and you're all set but um, at this point i'll kind of leave you off with that and glue up the inside the shank i'll get the cork uh, glued up and everything and uh, when it's time to stick it all together, I'll let you check out what it looks like in, on that. So we'll see you back in just a little bit then. All right, so it's time to stick the cork in. I've got the shank here all glued up. Uh, got it marked to left and right. Um, I already stuck the other one together before realizing, hey, I'm recording this. But, uh, well, at least I stopped in time to let you guys see this one. Now, usually the shanks in general, they are... Um, they're compatible with either left or right. Uh, I'd say probably 99% of the time if it visibly looks like it, it's compatible in either direction it is. But there's that 1% chance that they may be off quite a bit. Again, um, because the way boots are constructed and shoes are constructed with a Goodyear build like this, there is still a handmade aspect to it. So, you know, cobblers that manufacture or shoemakers that make them, they everything's by feel. There's no way of actually measuring or explaining it necessarily. And shanks could end up being one of those things a lot of times too. Also, um, you know, from the walking pattern, the way everything's built, this right foot may have formed slightly more at a pitch than the left foot possibly. So we'd rather make sure that they match up uh, left and right. But there goes that squeaking again with the uh, jack stand. But I've got my cork sheet here already pre-cut. It's kind of crudely cut basically because it comes in larger sheets. I can cut it down a bit more, but this was kind of a final piece here. So I just cut it straight across so I don't have tiny little chunks laying around somewhere and um, eventually just collecting dust or making more dust for me and I don't want to deal with that so I just cut off whatever last bit I had on, on that particular strip. I like to go around make sure I hammer out everything nicely. It may look like I'm hammering in the same spot over and over, but I'm actually holding the hammer at an angle to make sure that the um, the cork lays in a little bit better and deeper into the crevice of where the um, where the welt ends. Now, for those of you who are wondering, what's the point of a shank? What's the point of a, having a cork? Okay, there we go. You know, the whole point of it is, we'll start with the shank. The shank is there to, one, keep that proper curve to the shoe or boot so that when you put the heel on there, it gives you the proper curvature to accommodate that heel. <clears throat> the other thing is the shank is also a support feature. It helps with arch support in a way, as well as, um, you know, stabilizes everything a little bit nicer. All right, so I just took out the sole out of the oven, so it's a little toasty. I'm going to go ahead and stick this on. It's better when I do it standing up. Get as close as I can to that edge there. And start lining it all up. Let's 
It's a nice tight fit. Okay. Make sure before I start pressing too hard or anything. Oh yeah, I fixed it. It spins and doesn't squeak. Look at that. Go to a couple of weeks, it's gonna wear out and start squeaking on me again. jack stands are old this one that we have is actually what's called a sutton jack stand and they're actually very prized amongst cobblers just because they're hefty they're cast iron all the way through they're not uh they're not too loose or anything i mean they've got some heft to them so quite a few cobblers try to find them and hunt them down i wish i had a couple more on the press for just a second if I had a few more that'd be great I have one other one here but it's one of those really light jack stands that's like it spins at the top over here and the rest of the way down is just a hollow tube and it's annoying I don't like it. it tilts over easily and when you hammer on the jack stand sorry I gotta go behind the camera here and stick the sole in the oven but when you hammer on those lighter jack stands, they kind of bounce up and everything. So I don't like it, but we, <laughs> all right, let me switch this around. pressed on there and everything now I just got to press around the welt area here which I have to actually remove the camera to do so because it's uh, hanging on to my 5-in-1 which has the welt press around it but then uh, I'll go ahead and cut off all the extra material that's hanging off all the way everywhere here so give me just a second and I'll be right back then I'll let you check out what it looks like when I'm cutting it off well did I show you guys already what I used to cut it off it's just one of these hook blades I'll let you guys see it again if I already showed it. I can't remember, but uh, give me just a second. On. All right, so I'll just show you real quick. So I've got the hook blade. I had to stick the other sole on there while it was uh, warm and everything. I just find the closest point and start cutting away some of that ac excess. Can't pronounce that word right. Now, of course, we're going to trim and shave it down a bit closer, so this is just to remove the majority of it. Now, I could use my 5-in-1 uh, tool, of course, to cut off all of this here, but uh, with this blade here, I can get a lot closer. Cuts down on the time needed to actually sand and trim everything. Prevents from needing to heat up the sole from all that friction. And then that just adds more potential for it to come unglued. But, uh, yep, at this point I'm going to set this one aside again to cure overnight. Unfortunately, today was one of those other busy days where I didn't start working in the back until like 1 o'clock today. Maybe a little bit later. Between having to go out to the front, answer calls, I had uh, packages and other things to ship out and a whole bunch of stuff. And even with the help of my wife and sister being here ended up being uh, kind of a crazy busy day so kind of uh, out of luck on that but we'll go ahead and let it cure overnight uh, the other thing is also regardless of what I have to wait for I just realized I ran out of the red heels in the right size these are a little bit too big here and uh, called my local supplier they're out of stock so I told them they have to ship it from out of state for me I need it right away so now I gotta wait for these anyways. But in the meantime, we'll just let these cure. Continue working on them, at least attaching the heel base and just work on it slowly, little by little until those heels come in. There's not much I can do about it, unfortunately, at this time. Um, it happens sometimes. So anyone that ever experiences that problem through us or any other cobblers, I do apologize, but it happens. Us cobblers, sometimes we plan out and think, oh, we've got you know half a dozen of these in stock or a dozen or however many. All of a sudden we start getting a bunch of demands for these and uh, in a particular size and we're like oh yeah we should have enough we should have enough and then 
come to realize, oh crap, someone else took in another pair and I didn't even know about it. And that happens. So be patient with us. We definitely appreciate it. You know, we, we're doing our best we can to keep up with the workflow, especially during the busy seasons. And uh, for anyone that's wondering, busy seasons are usually start of um, about maybe middle of fall is when it starts roughly all the way through winter time basically and then springtime it finally starts to slow down summer is usually slower just because nobody's really wearing boots too often and it's usually the boots and shoes that everyone realizes oh they're slippery or oh i've got a hole in the bottom of my shoes so now my foot's getting wet from all the snow, snow and slush so that's why we see that kind of spike um, but summertime everyone's wearing more flip-flops and they're not really worth working on at all flip-flops are designed to be worn out and tossed at least majority of them so you know thought i'd give you that as a heads up for anybody that's wondering if you're wanting your shoes fixed or repaired um if you want a bit of a quick quicker turnaround time or make it easier on the cobbler you're taking it to spring or summertime probably the better time of the year to do it um, but otherwise winter time if you need it We'll still take care of you. We're not going to turn you down or anything. It just might take a little longer than than we'd really hope for sometimes. All right, so I'll get the other one taken care of, and we'll see you back a little bit later when it's time to uh, get everything stitched up. I'll uh, I'll do the trimming. Oh, I'll let you guys check out how we groove everything. We're, we still have to groove out the channel here where the stitch is going to be sitting in it, which is uh, different than... Uh, if you take these back to Allen Edmonds, which they do a top stitch. But I'll talk more about that uh, when it's time to go ahead and do the channel for you. So we'll see you a little later. All right, so we're back here again to get these all sanded out around the edges and get the channel grooved. I did get the heels in, so i got to go ahead and get them taken care of quickly. So I thought I'd change up the angle, see if this might be good for you guys to see how we do the channeling. Uh, we've got our sanding belt down here. There's a groover here, but we don't tend to use that too much with uh, rubber soles just because it's basically a blade that spins really fast and it tends to really grab hold of that and we'll just yank the shoe out of my hand or boot out of my hand. So we're not going to be using that. We tend to use that just on leather and certain types of rubber materials. And then the groover will have to channel out the area where the stitch will be sitting down in there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I got everything channeled out. Looks pretty good there. Of course, I spread it down with some water to kind of make it a little bit easier because this is metal, of course, so that it doesn't grip too much against that rubber. And I marked up the heel base off camera real quick to make sure I get everything lined up, sanded that out. I mean, with that channel back here, it'll definitely uh, not be an issue to sand it out down the road or anything, but I like to do a channel back here anyway some cobblers do some cobblers don't but I prefer to do it just at least a little bit so that uh, the stitches are protected in case this heel block needs to become uh, be, needs to be removed and a new one put on or any other reason whatsoever just taking that extra little bit right there definitely makes it easier down the road for at least us cobblers makes no difference to you as the person who owns them but for the next cobbler or for myself definitely make it easier down the road so I'll go ahead and uh, sand out the heel blocks here on the bottom I'll do the other boot and uh, continue on and get ready to stitch them so we'll see you back in just a little bit when it's time to stitch them. all right so before we stitch it of course we got to make sure we clean it up I blew everything off with the compressed air of course there's gonna be a few water spots my main concern is the channel right here 
But uh, I thought I'd go ahead and let you guys see. I take an awl kind of like that right there. And just kind of go inside the channel and get some of, some of that loose uh, dust and gunk out real quick so it doesn't get caught up in the stitches. I mean, it's not really damaging to the stitches. It's just more aesthetics. You know, you get dust, it doesn't look great. And then take a nylon brush like that and clean it out. The compressed air helps a lot, but it doesn't get everything. I just like to get a little extra out because one, it kind of clogs up our machine when we're stitching, and then two, it's those little things, you know? Those little things can make a world difference sometimes in appearance and quality and everything. But during this time, I'd like to kind of talk about what we just did. We did the whole channeling right now. So the stitch is going to sit inside the channel. Now, usually when you send it back to the factory to get the factory refurbishment, it doesn't matter which company you go with, whether it's Allen Edmund like these guys here or another company as well, it, uh, it never gets a channel like this. It, the stitching is what's called a top stitch. I talked about it a little while ago in one of my Soul Talk Sunday episodes. And, um, you know, it was uh, one of those things where you know most companies they don't bother with a channel on there because it's it's much tougher with rubber to do a channel it's it's one of those things that you know during mass production it takes a lot of extra time it's one of those detail things that not everyone can even do just because it's it's kind of scary it's frightening you're going to be holding a pair of shoes or boots there like that and it's cutting a channel at such a high speed it, it can get a little scary sometimes so you know, companies, they never do a channel stitching. And, um, you know, we try to make sure we do that. There's only a handful of boots and shoes that I've ever come across where I had to do a, chan uh, a top stitch like they do from the factories. But otherwise, I almost always try to do a channel like that. There is another version, which I did on a pair of uh, Allen Edmonds uh, for a gentleman, where I did a what's called closed channel stitch, which is probably, when it comes to rubber, it's probably the hardest to do mainly because in a closed channel what happens is our machine that stitches it has this little blade that comes down and cuts the channel open so it's nice and thin while the machine is stitching right after that cut goes so you know getting all three of those to line up is difficult all in itself but the other challenge is rubber stretches on leather doing a closed channel stitch is not a problem at least not for me I've come across quite a few guys that say they they can't stand doing it because it's it's hard getting all three parts basically to line up just right to make the stitch work properly and sit inside the channel so it but on on rubber it's much harder because the rubber stretches so when the when the stitch goes down in here sometimes it likes to grab a little corner of the rubber and just pull it down with it and the stitch is still sitting inside the channel, but it looks like it's almost sitting on top of the rubber in certain areas just because the way it grabbed a corner of this uh, this rubber here. And in the uh, closed channel version, that it's such a narrow area for the stitch to be able to sit down in there that it's guaranteed you're going to have a few stitches that are kind of just, they look like they're sitting on top, but they really aren't. It's just the way that it pulled down the rubber at a certain angle so I thought I'd point that out I try to avoid doing the closed channel on rubber soles at least on day nights certain vibram soles I have a it's a little bit easier for me just because it's a denser rubber and doesn't stretch as easily day night and other versions of uh, soles out there from vibram and other companies they they're very stretchy so the softer the rubber and more stretchy it is the harder it is so I don't bother with with doing a closed channel all that often i've only done it a handful of times on things like day nights and a few other shoes out there so it's a lot better to do it with a open channel doing just a top stitch like the factories do it if you want us to do it we can i don't recommend it let's go ahead and get it done right for you the you know the first time and do that channel beforehand it'll protect that stitch for a longer period of time by the way don't know if you can see got me a fancy new hat Got me a hat. Instead of wearing that ball cap and everything, I thought it's time to upgrade a little bit. My hair is extremely long. I need a haircut badly. And I got a dollar in here. My son stole my other hat, so I taught him to put a dollar in there. 
but let me go ahead and finish up the other one and I'll see you back in a little bit in our stitch room when it's time to stitch it. All right, so ready to stitch. We're over here at our outsole stitcher, our good old Rapid E. One day, hopefully, I can repaint this guy and make it look pretty. One of the cobblers in our cobbler group, his looks real nice. Hopefully, I can get mine to look like that one of these days. But, hey, appearance is just appearance. This one still runs the same as his. But anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and stitch it up. I've got uh, for the top thread, which is actually going to end up being here on the bottom inside the channel, I've got purple. First time I'm using purple, and I mentioned to this gentleman about it, and he got excited. I'm like, sweet, because I just thought that would look awesome. Red day night with purple stitch. And then for our bottom thread, we've got brown. That's going to end up being on the top. And that's what it was originally from the factory. The top will usually try to match up what it was originally. But if you want to change it out, let us know. We'll be more than happy to do that for you. So, I'm going to spray it down with a little bit of water. Okay. And get going. Looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? I like the purple. It does look a little more blue with that red, but... Not bad. It's going a little bit slower because, of course, since it's wet, it likes to kind of slide a little further than I'd like it to sometimes. So I kind of have to slow down the stitch on it and... Um, also because this is a split welt right there, so sometimes that split welt kind of wants to get in the way just a little bit. But, turned out pretty alright. So I'll go ahead and uh, finish out the other one off camera, and uh, we'll continue on. I'll go ahead and glue everything up. I'll do that off camera also, so I'm not wasting too much time with just gluing and talking like I usually do. So we'll see you back in just a little bit. Alright, so I'm back here again with these, and time to go ahead and remove this uh, little top piece here since after all we are converting to a day night sole and heel that's how we adjust for the height because typically <clears throat> these day night heels are definitely thicker than your traditional top lift and so they need to be removed but I don't know where my regular pliers are and just use these ones there. Alright. All right. Now we've got this off. I don't really need it. We're going to end up tossing it. But we'll grab our gripper nails and go ahead and run them in. Now, usually with Allen Edmonds, um, with the heel bases on a day night sole, they end up actually nailing them in from the inside. And let's see. Um, yeah. But it's better not to do it on these ones because a lot of times they they build the sole insole in such a way where it's not a good idea to really lift anything up. So I'm gonna end up running the nails in like they were originally from the top. Same old gripper nails like they had, at five eighths of an inch, which will go down perfectly. If I can grab it, go down perfectly 
in through the sole and a little bit into the uh, midsole and into the cork very slightly. So I'll grab that heel base nicely. After we got the after we got the uh, top lift glued on, we're going to be nailing it as well. And I did check through to make sure that all these holes here don't uh, line up with these original holes too much just because otherwise they would end up getting in the way because once we get the top lift on say we start running this nail in it may hit hit the head of the nail that's holding the heel base on so got to make sure to compensate for that if need be after I get this all nailed in I'm gonna rough up this heel base a little bit more to make sure to remove any old glues and then just start gluing stuff together. Alright, so I'll go ahead and finish that out on this one and then do the same thing for this boot here and we'll see you back. Now I did want to mention one other thing I forgot. Um, if you're somebody who wants to possibly uh, make your heel a little bit higher and you request us not to remove this little piece here and just make the heel higher. Um, it doesn't quite work like that unfortunately because if we just put this straight over top like that there, uh, unfortunately because there's a shank inside or even if it doesn't have a shank, that, um, that kind of forces the shoe to misalign and not sit properly. So we have to make sure that we compensate for that by pitching that heel and just kind of changing it slightly. We've got a pair of Magnani's here that we're doing that. This guy wanted three quarters of an inch added. It's like, uh, not a pair of Magnani's. Come on, man. So sometimes we got to do it, but as you can tell, the angle is, uh, is adjusted properly. We still have to finish these out. They're still a work in progress, but just thought I'd uh, throw that out at everyone real quick, but we'll see you back here in a little bit when we're going to continue on working with these. All right, so I've got the top lift heel on. Ended up taking uh, my little lip knife here like that there and just kind of cut out a little bit of the extra on the inside here. Makes it easier during the cleanup and sanding process on there. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab our gripper nails again and uh, just run them through the top all around. Now some companies don't uh, don't run these nails in and on certain heel blocks or heel bases however we call them we call them heel bases usually you almost have to run these nails in um, just because these uh, these heel bases here they're actually a fiberboard they're not actual leather and so it's almost like a must just in case if something happens where it won't start peeling off because a fiberboard heel base is almost uh, almost like paper, like plywood style, but uses paper that's highly compressed. It's durable and nice and dense, you know, better than a lot of other materials out there, but there are still uh, weaknesses to it because if you catch that heel somehow on the corner here and it starts pulling it up, a small thin layer of that can end up coming along with that top lift where the nails that go all the way through the heel base and kind of secure everything nicely. But when you've got a leather heel block, for example, the solid stacked leather one, you don't necessarily need to nail them. I mean, we still do just because you never know. We've had some people that are just that rough on their boots and shoes. so. We still do it, just as a precaution. There have been a handful of times where I ended up not running nails in just because of the particular design. Maybe there was no heel block on there and it actually needed a really low profile and everything. And just because of the thickness, the nails would end up coming through completely. So there are some some exceptions. Well, now I've got one of my punches here. I'm just gonna punch the nails, nail heads further down in there so they don't stick up or anything on us. Okay, 
Yes. Now they're sitting inside there. And they go further down that way. These are at 5 eighths of an inch, so that means that they go through the heel block and just ever so slightly into the sole itself. Not much, but just slightly. And so that's why we ran the uh, gripper nails in as well into the heel block before we had the top lift on, because they'll go through the heel block, the sole, and into the midsole slightly, and just a tiny bit into the cork itself. So it kind of really grips and binds everything together. But I'll let these uh, sit and cool off and cure for just a little bit. Then I gotta start sanding everything out, putting on the edging, and uh, you know, start finishing it out. I have a couple ideas I want to try for the bottom here. Nothing too fancy, but I'll let you guys check that out a little bit later. But for now, I gotta get this all going. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit then. All right, so I did a bit of work for the edging already. Still needs to be buffed out some more afterwards, but. Before I do that, I thought I'd do something a little interesting and grab some Angelus acrylic paint, purple. And just for fun and because we can, we're going to fill in this little area of the heel at least. I was debating on doing the sole, but thought that'd be a little bit too much purple then. The heels at least, they, it's just a small area. Because the sole area already has purple stitching, so why not? Been meaning to try this for quite some time, just just to check it out and everything. Um, but one of the cobblers, well, a handful of cobblers already beat me to it. Started out with uh, Steve out in Virginia. He did a few pairs of day nights where he did some paint work on them and uh, I was like, dang it, I just had that idea and he beat me to it. And then a few other cobblers tried it out, so I guess it's my turn now. Now I can't even claim that I ended up starting that trend. Oh well. Us fellow cobblers, a lot of us like to share secrets and tips and tricks a lot of times, which is kind of nice. At least the local cobblers and well the local cobblers don't here in denver a lot of the cobblers sadly they're very um I don't, I don't know how to put it but they're very uptight about their shop secrets and stuff even one of my local supplier guys over ruby leather um I show him pictures and stuff and he asked me, he's like, hey, can you send those over to me? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's like, wait, or do you maybe not want me to show anyone? I'm like, go for it, man. Show everyone, show everyone and anyone, whatever they want to see. If they really want to steal my so-called secrets or whatever, they're not really secrets necessarily. I mean, I may have some of my, my secrets of certain blends of, uh, house mix cleaners or something else that I might use but even that it's not really a secret if somebody asks me about certain ones I share it our industry is in a evolutionary state so we don't uh, we don't need to be having secrets at least on the basic stuff you can tell them that if any of the cobblers have any questions, they could always call me. They could check out my YouTube videos. I had nothing. I want to be that friendly cobbler. Friendly local neighborhood cobbler. Alright. It's not too thick of a coat. It's uh, just a nice thin coat. But what do you guys think? I think it'd be too much if we really added, added it to all of those. But... To the heel, why not? Just a little bit. All right, so I'll let that uh, dry just for a minute. I'm gonna stick it in front of a fan here in a second, and then I'm gonna go through and start doing our Medal Dior treatment. We're gonna strip it down, well, not necessarily strip it, we're gonna clean it off with some uh, Saphir Reno Mat. Uh, of course, condition it with the Saphir Medal Dior Renovator Cream. Go back some uh, some color with the Pomadier Cream and top it all off with some wax. 
for this gentleman, of course, we're going to be taking care of him with only the best severe modality or he's a fellow uh, Alan Edmund enthusiast. If you're not familiar with uh, the group on Facebook, there's one, everyone calls it in short AEE for Alan Edmund enthusiast. And um, that group has thousands of members. It's for everyone that uh, loves the Alan Edmund footwear. They talk about it. They rant and rave and they talk about any kind of problems anyone's coming across. Uh, so definitely, definitely a well-worthy uh, group to check out if you're not part of that group already. But um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the uppers. I'm not going to waste your time too much with it. I'll let you check out what the finished product's going to be look like. I had to kind of hurry up and do the finishing and some of the edge work a little bit on here. Um, just because i got to have these done tonight and it's after hours. I've been getting interrupted all day long today and... You know, just taking apart a single pair of shoes here took me nearly an hour and a half and just take it apart because phone calls, uh, my wife was in here helping me, even with her help, kind of get stuff done. But I'll go ahead and take care of what I need to on these and we'll see you back here in just a minute. All right, so I finished them out. Use some Reno mat there, clean it all off, give it a little bit of time to dry. Moved on to the Saphir Renovator from the Medal Dior line. Dark brown number, I never remember this number, number five. And then the dark brown wax also, and then the Pate Deluxe Medal Dior stuff for the upper. And then I took some mahogany, which is the number nine. And I used that around the edging a little bit more to kind of bring out just a little bit more of a shimmer on those edges there. Not too bad. And threw on some purple laces for him. A lot of purple, right? But nothing too crazy. I mean, purple stitch in there. Got a little bit of purple there. And, um, you know, the purple laces. I still have his original laces if he decides he wants to take them out and it's just too much purple for him. I mean, you're not going to see that purple from the top. It's all on the bottom strictly. Uh, but got to throw a little bit of purple on there. So I thought I'd throw it on, but he's got these ones just in case. And if so, we can swap them out for him and put in different color set of laces if he needs them these ones are still in good shape maybe he might decide to have these as a backup and then start using those purple they're a little bit long but I noticed these ones are a little bit long too so you know I'll just tuck those into the shoe and they're ready to go I hope you enjoyed the video um, you know it's uh, first time I'm doing one with the red day night sole uh, I've done a few red day nights before, but this is the first video I'm doing, so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, the steps that we take to convert it from a leather sole to a full day night. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them. Leave a comment down below. If you also have any more detailed questions, sometimes maybe it's a little too much for a comment section. You could always uh, go to our website, cobblersplus.com. All of our contact information is on there. Our email address, our phone number, and our address as well. If you're local, you can swing by and uh, you know, we'd be more than happy to help or answer any questions. If you're not local, uh, again, you could always email or call us. Or if you want us to work on any of your shoes or boots or any other leather goods, uh, you can always send them in to us by mail. We have a ship in order tab on the top of our website. Just fill out the PDF file, print it, or print it, fill it out, and uh, send a, over your items that you need worked on or fixed up. And we'd be more than happy to take care of them and ship them back to you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon to be notified when we have new videos, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. I know there are a few people out there that are not big fans of Alan Edmonds, for example, um, but we love him. You know, a lot of people love him. Alan Edmonds, at that price point, you can't beat a pair of shoes like this. There are a lot of other great shoes in that price point as well, a little bit less, a little bit more, you know whole lot more in some cases too but you got to consider for this particular price point these are a very well made shoe um, you know there may be some kind of uh, issues possibly or whatever but even high quality shoes sometimes have some issues with them too you know, but uh, each company just shows uh, shows how good their footwear is by how they stand behind it as well and Alan Edmonds does a really good job if there's any issues they're more than happy to take it back there are plenty of other companies out there as well but um, you know hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see everyone next time then